it could be tricky. Friction fire when everything is damp. Just got to wear my parts into the fireboard. I'll throw this away and you'll see how it works. I can do it one-handed. And you see, I did that one-handed. <laughs> oh, smoke again. Hi, I'm Greg Ovens, and this is Ovens Rocky Mountain Bushcraft. There we go. Oh. Greg Ovens. This is Ovens Rocky Mountain Bushcraft. Sorry about the traffic noise. I'm at Zach Fowler's backyard. Uh, today's video I figured uh, we'll do a bow drill fire for you in demonstration. He's got a cedar hedge over here. Uh, so I'll hopefully find my fireboard and, and drill in the cedar. Cedar's one of my favorite. Well, I'll walk you through the steps. It's going to be really difficult to get this fire going. It rained. It poured all day yesterday, rained hard all night. So it could be tricky. Friction fire when everything is damp uh, can be a very tricky procedure. So anyways, uh, got a knife that Zach lent me here. It needs sharpening though, so the first thing I gotta do to collect my parts is sharpen the knife. I've got uh, the sharpener that one of the Sponsors has given uh, for our channels. We had one of these on the 30 day survival challenge. Diamond, diamond grit, it's good. Very good sharpener. It's got a coarse on one side, fine. Then it's got the leather for fine tuning. That was deep. These cedar branches aren't as straight as they should be, but I'm gonna try to make something work. Any friction fire that you see me do, I try to collect dry, rotted piece that I can grind into a powder so I can get a bigger coal when I do get a coal from the bow drill. It's hard to find dry stuff though. You have to see how it goes. It's also hard to find a straight branch. These are all crooked. I think this is my best bet because even though it'll be a short drill, I have a section of um, fairly straight branch to work with. Now don't forget, the branches have to be dry and dead. You can't use green wood for a friction fire. It's a little uh, windy out, so I'll leave my rotted stump out in the wind to dry out. It's not raining or else I would put it under something to keep it dry. I think it's dry enough to work once I get my main coal. bark off. I don't want the bark on there. I'm 
That'll work. So that's perfect for my <clears throat> socket end. And that's good to start my fireboard end. That'll be my bow. work. I'm going to show you another little trick that makes bow drill uh, fires so much easier. Got to know the tricks, you know. Drill a little hole. Just the same as I did with the socket that I'm going to temporarily use. Hope this cedar is dry enough. Once I get my main set up, it'll work fine. Now we got smoke, but right, I'm not ready to do the fire yet. Just got to wear my parts into the fireboard, my drill. I think we'll get this going. Okay, so now I'm going to throw this away. So. I have to build my notch yet and then show you a very fascinating easy method of bow drill. I like to put my notch about halfway, not quite halfway into the center of where the where the drill is going to spin, about halfway into the middle. In a pie shape is what I cut it. Wider at the beginning narrow into the middle. Okay, so I've got my notch cut. Not quite halfway because the drill is gonna get thicker as it goes because I had it sharpened. So by the time it gets to where I want it, it'll be approximately in the middle. So Zach's got these big poles out here and this is gonna be my socket. <clears throat> Basically, this will hold my drill. about the right weight. I'm attempting a bow drill right in the puddle here. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. There's my socket. I'll work. One more little trick I want to show you with your fireboard. You see it's uh, pretty thick. So if I'm going to catch the powder at the bottom, a lot of those coals or sparks are going to go out. So I like to take a wedge and I should be able to get a fire within a quarter inch of the wood. So I put a wedge in like that so I can catch my powder on that wedge. So one thing you want to do is make sure you've got your tinder all your little branches, everything ready before you even attempt the fire. Um, I found some nice grass I like right beside Zach's house here that's been protected from the rain. And this this will work good. Put my coal in the grass, make a little bird nest to put my coal in. I've got my other dry rotted stump ready to go. Now we just have to set the uh, pole up for the socket and you'll see how it works. I can do it one handed. So now I want to collect smaller branches to bigger branches, have that ready, have my grass ready for my coal, some pine needles. So once I get my grass going, the needles, then the smaller sticks, then the bigger sticks with my fire board. Okay, I've got my notch. I'm going to cut another notch on this side, almost halfway, and that'll double my chances of catching a coal. I've got my two notches. See? Now I don't want it to go side to side. I can drive two stakes to hold it secure, but I've shown that on other videos. 
So I'm going to take some bank line, tie to that tree, and tie to this tree to stabilize it sideways. I've got my dry rotted stump. Let's put it by the base of this tree so I know where it is. My little sticks, pine needles, and then some bigger sticks. There's lots of bigger sticks around, so I'm not too worried about that. Put my fireboard on. We'll get this set up and then I'll tie this off. Now I just have to stabilize it. See how it wants to go one way or the other? That's the idea, tying it off. I thought this was a tree. It's actually just a big branch that jammed up, but I think it'll be good enough anyway. Pull that tight and I'll go once around it to this other tree. Now it can't go anywhere. It has to just put the pressure down and it can't go sideways. See? But it still puts the weight. And I didn't take some of these branches off because they stabilize it too. So I don't have to worry about that unless there's a branch poking down that's going to hold the weight up from the drill. I literally could build all of these bow drill parts using the log for a socket with just one hand, one arm. Say I had a broken arm, I can still accomplish this even though it would take a lot longer. It can be done. I'm going to show you what you would need to do in order to do this one-handed. For now I'm just going to whittle the parts with two hands. So to hold my fireboard in place I'm going to have to take a couple of Y sticks, pound them in the ground over top of my fireboard to hold it in place if I'm going to do it one-handed. Actually, I don't even think I need the back one. I think just the one is good. Just got to cut it down more. Actually, I had a guy that uh, runs a survival school and he asked me, he had somebody in the class that only had one arm and he asked if I knew a way that he would be able to start a bow drill fire and I sent him this idea and he loved it. One handed. I don't usually start to go fast until I see a good amount of smoke. I'm starting to see smoke now. Now I'll go faster. It's going good now. And you see, I did that one-handed and a little cold out. This rotted stump's not the greatest. It'll work though. I can attempt the fire pretty quick. I love my bow drill fires. Started my first one at 13. Then I was hooked. Just let it sit till it's all red and then we can attempt to get it into flame. I think I got a big enough coal not to worry about it. And I got it upside down which is actually perfect. And when I see the red on the top side, then we'll try our fire. I can probably try it now. There we go. <coughs> oh, smoke again. Now, I'm not gonna start a fire. It's a demonstration, I don't need a fire. Right there. One hand with the bow drill. Make sure that's all out. That was fun. <laughs>